Thanks for joining me again. Uh, in my last video, I was really struggling to output files from Fusion 360 for laser cutting. I was ending up with some weird results. And Taylor Stein from Autodesk watched my video, identified what I was doing wrong, and gave me a quick and very enlightening lesson. So now I'm gonna show you the quick, easy, and right way to create a DXF from your objects within Fusion so that you can export them to your machine and cut them. Let's dig into Fusion. I've updated the file a little bit since last time. I had to create a new central piece with a smaller hole because the um, lamp that I ended up using has a different shape to it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of these pieces so that I can leave the originals where they are. After I get them copied, it's the copy that I'll actually be moving around. That way I can always go back and alter things. In this case, I've also made an additional copy because I want to make duplicates of all the parts. I'll go over why in a little bit. My goal at this point is to lay all the parts out perfectly flat on the same plane so that I can export or create a drawing of all of the faces and then export that as a DXF. Talking to Taylor, he suggested I use a joint, which you see me messing with here. But what I ran into was that I don't fully understand the joint system, I guess, because when I came back to move things later, I would find that it would move all the things it was connected to, and I, and, and, you know, I just got confused. So ultimately what I did was I used an align instead of a joint where you're aligning two faces on a similar plane. This has the downside that you could accidentally bump things out of planar alignment, but I'm just really careful to use the uh, little handles instead of you know, moving things with the, the centerpiece. So I, I align everything on the same plane and I'm trying to keep things close together here. I know that any of these pieces mirrored and laid side by side will, will fit in the laser bed. So I'm kind of using that as my width template and I'm just dragging them all out to create a single DXF that I can import into Adobe Illustrator. Now, the reason I'm doing mirrored duplicates of all of these is so that I can create a jig where I can etch, then cut, and then pull the pieces out, set them down into the holes that were just cut, and then etch again, which would allow me to etch both sides. I'll do a whole video just on etching both sides this way, uh, so watch for that. Once I get everything laid out exactly where I want it, this is where the magic is gonna happen. This is the part that Taylor uh, showed me that just made everything so much easier. All right, I've saved my work. I've got it laid out the way I want it. I select one face, make sure I've got it selected. I go up here and I, um, I start a new sketch. So select the face, I go up and I click the button. And it doesn't look, oh, you gotta capture the position. It doesn't look like much has happened, but I've captured that entire face perfectly. Everything that's been done to it, it's captured. Then you choose project and you go and you select the other faces. They look different and Taylor was sure to point out that the original one doesn't look like it captured everything, but it does. So by clicking project and clicking all these other faces, I've got everything included. That's it. I say okay, I, I now have this brand new sketch that is just those faces all captured perfectly. I can export that as a DXF and open it in Illustrator to make sure that it works. And there we go, it's perfect. So that's it, there you go. A perfect export from Fusion 360 that I can throw into Illustrator or just take directly to my machine. Thank you, uh, Taylor Stein, for showing me how to do that. It was incredibly helpful. 
Uh, in the next video, what I'll do is I'll bring everything into Illustrator, I'll lay it out into templates for cutting, and I'll show you how I do this um, fixturing, where you flip the parts to get engraving on both sides without having to re-zero your machine or line anything up fancy. That's the next video. Stay tuned.